Tesla went nuts, right? Tesla went nuts. 250 and a half, 252 pre-market highs needs to build. Tesla went to 360, uh, 260, went to 260. If Tesla, guys, if Tesla can confirm the 10 day moving. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, trading day today. We'll get to that in a second. If you are brand new to the channel, as always, we, we really, really, truly appreciate uh, your viewership and spending a couple of minutes uh, with us, like, subscribe, share, come on this journey with us for the infinite, uh, infinite and non, uh, non glorified way to try to find a finish line that doesn't exist. And that's kind of what trading is. There's never a trophy at the end of the road because there is no end of the road. It just keeps on going and going and going. And this is one big, uh, life learning life cycle. And you eventually start looking at things a little bit differently, the more years uh, you get in. So let's talk about this. Uh, last night, uh, we talked about a very, very big level today on the queues. Uh, it was this 365 level. Uh, we talked about it, it was the 10 day moving average. Um, a lot of really good action. We'll, we'll get to the pivots in a second. There was a lot of really good action, but there was a lot of roller coasters in between. Uh, Chairman Powell started speaking today at 9.30. Usually when we have a Fed date, uh, you know about it's two o'clock and then 2.30. Uh, it becomes uh, it becomes a scenario of a Q and A, and then the market just goes all over the place. Today started right from the word go. He started testifying roughly around uh, nine thirty in the morning, uh, which was uh, nuts, just absolutely nuts. He drove the market very very aggressively to the upside, which was good for us. Again, a, a lot of really great levels uh, broke. It started going higher. Everything was great. You thought this was going to turn into a two three day uh, really really big move, and then some point around lunchtime. He stopped talking, uh, and apparently, from what I understand, before Biden spoke, right, and Biden addressed uh, the economy, and they started calling it the Bidenomics, right, uh, there was a massive nasty pull in the middle of the day. And apparently, from what I understand, you can see this pull here uh, from 366.50s all the way down to 362. From what I understand is, uh, and again, who, who knows if this is even real, but what I understand is, uh, there was a, a transcript that was floating around. Maybe people got a wind of it, what he was going to say. But ultimately, he didn't say anything, okay? And that's the whole point. The only thing he kept on reiterating the point was inflation. Uh, you know, we wanted to get to 2% two, uh, is basically what, what Powell is re reiterating. What Powell said, there might be, uh, you know, two extra, two extra rate hikes. This hasn't been anything new to the market. I don't know why the market would spook that, uh, to get spooked with that information, but it happened, right? And they pulled the market down three, four points, uh, to the bulls' credit, they bounced back, started aggressively uh, bidding the market back up towards the end of the day. But there really wasn't any tangible information. That's why it's so odd that uh, Bi uh, that Biden spoke today, that uh, Powell spoke today. But moral of the story is the market is still in the same place where it was a day ago. We just had a bigger of a roller coaster effect, uh, you know, roller coaster effect throughout today's session. But but here's kind of the good news, bad news of what we saw today. Uh, the good news is, uh, the good news is we did break above the 10 day moving average. The bad news was they they took it all back. The good news is this is the highest closed in the last three four days. So you you kind of have to look at the market from a glass half full perspective. The fact that they did buy back uh, buy back that dip. The fact that they did. Uh, reclaim the 10 day moving average. These are all at least positives. And again, when you're making your game plan uh, for tomorrow, you know, keep an eye, you know, keep it, uh, keep an impact of these, uh, of these facts. Uh, what's good about what else we saw today, a lot of the stocks that broke out today broke out very, very aggressively. For example, uh, last night we spoke about uh, ENVX, right? We talked about exactly uh, the game plan for ENVX. We said, listen, if it could, you know, if it could get into this lower, uh, lower rising support, Trav shorts go green. You know, EMDX went nuts. Uh, you know, letter U we spoke about yesterday also. Same play as EMDX. They did exactly the same thing. They trapped shorts on the bottom range and they took it higher. It was, I mean, a really nice trade off the opening range highs. Uh, big moves there. You saw Tesla wake up today. You saw 
Uh, you saw Microsoft get very, very close, just the way the NASDAQ got rejected, Microsoft rejected. But these are names I really like going into tomorrow uh, if the market price improves uh, today's action. Again, that's a very, very big if. But from the point of reference, again, I want to give the bulls uh, the benefit of the doubt. If you look at the really strong stocks, today, not everything participated. Uh, Amazon didn't participate. Meta didn't participate. But the stocks that did, right, the stocks that did, you know, the, uh, the, the Teslas of the world, uh, the Apples of the world, you know, the Microsofts of the world, they held firm. You know, they didn't really, with the exception of Tesla, they did, they did a very good job today. They didn't, you know, they didn't really go back when the market got pulled. That's a very, very uh, important sign. Uh, ironically, yesterday, and I apologize, there was a, a we had a little bit of a, of, of a video issue yesterday. It should be resolved today, and it obviously it's going to get resolved uh, by the weekend. I'm going to get a new uh, PC. I'm going to get a new uh, area just we're just uh, up to updating technology which is uh, always a good thing uh but last night what after i after i recorded the video uh, and the video came out with news right it was actually not another news it was a china news it was a, it was an industry news that you know they couldn't sell chips to china blah blah blah, blah. the wall street journal was performing you got to give these chip stocks a lot of credit on uh, the video was down like 20 this morning right on um, the video only closed down seven that's a really really strong comeback and a lot of these names as well. So, you know, you're starting to see all these bullish things happen again. You know, is NVIDIA out of the woods? Absolutely not. Any of these uh, chip makers out of the woods? Of course not. But but again, you, you, you want to see little baby stuff. It's not even from the chip chip sector uh, as a whole, just the fact that the, the bulls were willing to buy that dip today. We didn't see that uh, in the last couple of weeks when the market was back to us. And so these are kind of very, very uh, bullish things. Uh, after the close, uh, Micron... Uh, came out with earnings. So you can see an initial really, really strong bump here. Uh, the stock closed where at 67, it's trading uh, up a buck on the, you know, up a buck. Again, the Qs are, uh, Qs now are once again above 65 uh, on this Micron News because everything is getting a, a, a jolt. The key is tomorrow, can we price improve today's action? That's a very, very important thing. And I, I have to think, and I'm just kind of speaking out loud, I have to think if Biden didn't speak it, at lunchtime, we would have had a runaway train today. It's just everything really exploded at the same time today. And this looked like this is going to be one of these amazing, amazing days. The day turned out to be fine, but boy, oh boy, I went to lunch. I had all, all runners on, uh, on the queues, on MDB, you know, MDB, we covered, you know, MDB, Microsoft, um, you know, just every, every runner got stopped out on that push. And, and, and all I have to, you know, all I was sitting there, I go, wow, what the hell just happened here? And we just couldn't find news. You know, again, this is all hearsay. Uh, what's, you know, what exactly drove down the market? You can make it, you know, you could really make a case. Somebody made a case. Well, you know, um, he was talking, uh, Powell was, you know, talking about, you know, two more rate hikes. We already knew about this. They, they covered this in the last Fed meeting. So, if anybody has any information, what exactly happened around lunchtime? Why the queues went down three and a half points within within a half an hour? Just to let me know. But again, the, the day was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. But nothing wrong with it was completely different than thirty minutes before I went to lunch, when the day was absolutely phenomenal. Um, so it was a little disappointing. But again, such is life. It's not fair, right? Such is life. Trading is not fair. Get over it. It's over. Uh, it sucks. A lot of things are going to suck in your life. Again, it's all about, you know, it's all about sucking it up, having a short memory moving forward. And again, it's all about, it's all about price action. And again, nobody's opinion is ever going to be stronger. Uh, what the bottom line of the price action is and the closing prices. And at least today, uh, we did get a close right at uh, just below the 10-day the moving average. If you look at the SPIs, uh, they did the same thing, right? They, they reclaimed the 10-day moving average. They started moving higher. Right, they started moving higher, and that and that flush, at, you know, a flush at lunchtime. You know, you can see here, you know, the flush at lunchtime. Look at the move on the spies. The spies went from 437 to 434, and roughly back to 437. So that's kind of why why I want to give the bulls uh, the benefit of the doubt going into tomorrow's session. Just the resilience of that uh, of that aggressive nasty candle that they bought uh, everything back. So let's talk about. Now I'll give you guys some plays uh, for tomorrow. Uh, let's talk about the pivots. Everything was working so well, man. It really was. It was it was such a great day, and it turned into be an okay day. Whatever. It is what it is. Uh, let that be your worst problem. So we talked about last night in the video, Q's 365, rejected three times, needs to build. 
queues exploded. Of course, we made sales on the way up. It's not the point of making sales on the way up. It's the point of God. Why the hell did they come in and, and stop us out, right? So you had this, here was the 365. It exploded through the 365, put up like a $1.50 move. And then you can see here, it just everything came back, stopped us out at the runner, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, Meta never got up to the 290 level. Microsoft was really going well until the pull as well. Uh, 336.20 needs to build. And Microsoft stopped right at the 10-day moving average. You see this double top here? I actually like Microsoft. I really, really like Microsoft. Uh, either tomorrow or the next day, if it could reclaim the 10. Because if, if Microsoft starts reclaiming the 10-day moving average, and the keys reclaim it as well, man, this thing's going to rip it. But really, I mean, you got a $2 move on Microsoft, a little bit less than $2 move on Microsoft, but it stopped right short of the 10-day moving average. Uh, and as you can as you can understand, it got uh, stopped out of the runner as well. Letter U is good. Again, Letter U we discussed last night on the video. Uh, we talked about a potential remount if it was weakness and potential to it, yesterday's channel. They both confirmed uh, it didn't quite get to the 4140s for a bounce. It got to 4180, so I missed the bounce. But this 4260 second entry over that 43 level, you know, took this, you know, took letter U really nicely. You can see really, really big pop once it reclaimed, uh, once it reclaimed back that uh, 40, where are we, where are we, 43, right here. Once it reclaimed back to 43, really, really nice move. It traded as high as the 44 and change. Uh, they were coming for July uh, $51 calls. Keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow. Who knows? Maybe it takes out. Uh, it takes out the the, the mid June uh, highs, so we can keep an eye on you. But a really good move on on letter U. Uh, real uh, ENVX. You guys remember we talked about ENVX last night's video was pretty good. We got a lot of really good moves from last night's video. ENVX, a uh, huge breakout yesterday. We talked about for experienced traders. It traded right to the 1580s. It trapped, got above the 1645, and ENVX uh, ENVX traded all the way up to uh, 1745. Really, really great move on ENVX, uh, Roadblocks. Tell me technical analysis is not specific. Roadblocks, 43 rejected, three times needs to build, right? Guess where Roadblocks stopped today, right? If you had a guess, right? Drum roll, please, right? It stopped again at 43, so four times the charm. I'm telling you, eventually this damn thing brings 43, it's gonna rip, but uh, today was not the day. Uh, Airbnb, again, another name we discussed last night in the video, 129.30 needs to build. Uh, Airbnb uh, at one point went nuts. I mean, it went all the way up to uh, 132. Really, really big move there. Can you guess what, what pulled it, right? The, so UPST, it was a late entry. Congratulations for all you guys who caught this. They were coming for the 37 weekly calls, and this thing took off. 33.80 needs to build. Another name that confirmed, and you guessed it, the 10-day moving average. Guys, that's the birth of the trade. When you do your charting, look for stocks that are confirming the 10-day. I'm telling you, these are great, great setups. Uh, so it took out the 33.80, and traded the $36. Big, big move there uh, as well on UPST. Tesla went nuts, right? Tesla went nuts. 250 and a half, 252 pre-market highs needs to build. Tesla went to 360, uh, 260, went to 260. If Tesla, guys, if Tesla could confirm the 10-day moving out, remember all that energy, all the people when I started talking about, we had a great run on Tesla to the upside, and then we had a really, really good back test to the downside, and now it's so close to reclaiming the 10-day moving average. Remain, remember all that energy that people on social media said, we're the stock, we'll never pull back. Let's keep that energy going for tomorrow. Because if we can actually confirm the 10-day moving average, Tesla could really start stretching. So let's all hope. Let's all put our universal energy uh, in the same direction because if we can get a confirmation tomorrow on the 10-day moving average of Tesla and it confirms the 10-day, man, this thing could really, really wake up. But a really, really good move today on Tesla. I traded MDB today. Don't judge me. I traded MDB today. It was a thin stock. But the only reason why I traded, we've been talking about this thing for weeks, it finally broke out of this whole earnings channel, and the damn thing went up like 14 points. I had no size on this thing. I'm not ashamed of saying I have no size. It's thin as hell, but it gave us a $14 candle at one point. Uh, so really good move there. I got stopped on my runner. Can you guess why? Same thing as everything else. So it, yeah, it, it was a really good session in the morning. Uh, oh, BBIU. Yeah, look, stop that everywhere. What's the news? Uh, BBIO 1720 needs to build a really, really strong move here. So here is the uh, BBIO 1720 closed right at the highs. This thing looks really, really good. 
And actually, you know what? Let's start out. Uh, this is definitely one of the names I, I definitely want to uh, watch tomorrow. Either uh, a rising 60-minute support or a break above today's channels. Uh, Tesla, we just talked about. I really like, uh, I obviously really, really like uh, Tesla as well. I think that looks uh, really, really good. Uh, let me give you guys... Let me give you guys a couple of more plays. Microsoft, I like. I'm just looking at my phone. Microsoft, I like a lot. If it can get above the 10 days, you notice you have a lot of you have a lot of similar themes. If you guys notice, Tesla, uh, Tesla, Microsoft, they're all 10 day 10 day confirmations for tomorrow. So I really really like those plays. I like Microsoft. I like Tesla. If they confirm, obviously, um, letter U. If it, if it starts taking out the, the June highs. And look at Carvana, right? You have a huge short interest in, in Carvana. Keep an eye on this thing. If this thing starts taking out the top of the range, maybe this thing goes as well. So that's it, guys. It was, you know, it started out really, really well. I thought this was going to be a massive, massive day and it just turned into an okay day. But you know what? Okay is better than not okay, I guess. Chalk it up to another Danism. <laughs> guys, have a great night, everybody. Just keep in mind, tomorrow night, there is no video. It's my normal Thursday night off. If you are joining us tomorrow in the live webinar or on the Squawk Box, morning strategy starts up about 10 minutes after nine Eastern time. And I look forward to working with you. Have a great, great night, everybody. See you soon.